Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Crossing Technologies Core 2.0 Diamond Dab of the Day. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Join the family, tell your friends, send a like, and I respond to all comments. You know that song, Under Pressure? Doom, doom. I used to swim to that song. I used to run to that song. I used to work to that song. You know what I also did well? I lived to that song. I lived under a tremendous amount of pressure. And I still do. How do we work effectively in life under pressure? It's a very important discussion. Let's talk. Well, pressure is inevitable in life. Now and then we find ourselves dealing with situations where we have too much on our plates and too little time. Similar situations like this cause employees, people in relationships, mothers, fathers, children to feel high levels of stress and pressure, which can hurt performance and relationships. Excessive stress or pressure can turn people into unproductive, unfriendly individuals and compromise the quality of anything they do. Worse, they could even feel less motivation, anxiety and panic brought by the stress that can even further slow them down. Well, how do we improve and develop resilience so that we can maintain composure and cope better with the stress and pressure of work and life? Cheers. Let's discuss. Got to maintain control and focus. I know it sounds easier said than done, especially when things come all at once and when you're juggling multiple things that feel overwhelmed. However, there are ways to help develop awareness about situations and practice concentration techniques. You got to avoid negative thoughts that put you in a state of needless worrying. Instead, you got to start thinking that it's impossible to finish work on time. That's right. Remind yourself of the other times when you faced similar challenges and succeeded. Okay? So instead of thinking you can't get things done, remind yourself of how many times you did. Try to eliminate the outside distractions as much as you can when you're doing something specific. Maybe even create a plan. Individual requirements based on the tasks widely vary. But it's still advisable, whether you're in a professional setting or a personal setting, to come up with an overall plan. It can serve as just a benchmark guide so you can proceed with whatever you're doing in a systematic way. You might consider a checklist even so you can allocate time, resources for each activity or thing you're doing. Well, you've got to evaluate the priorities here. Think about it. You might have come across a situation where there's a high priority task. You tell everybody that you're working with and everybody you know, we've got to start juggling, we've got to be the juggler, throw everything at you, but we've got to get this done. Well, guess what? Somebody's going to drop one of those balls. So you've got to find a better organizational way. You've got to find ways to classify hyper-urgent, urgent, not so urgent. Eh, we'll talk about it. And then you manage and get your resources, your people, whatever it would be, focused on the most important things first. You got to also avoid procrastination. Procrastination is the best defense mechanism for personal and professional pressure, but it only adds pressure and work in the long run. So you got to remind everybody that getting started on something is the hardest part. When they get past the first step, the rest becomes more manageable. And i got to also know when to take a break or a breather. Many life coaches highlight the need for balance in everything we do. The same principles apply to this discussion. It's critically important that when you deal under pressure, okay, there's got to be a balance. You can't pause and rest all the time, but you can't be working at pace 11 all the time, you got to protect yourself because that's going to improve no matter what you do, any output 
of what you do. You got to break the tasks down into small pieces. Try to simplify things and communi effect, communicate effectively with the people in the room or the people in the world, whoever you're dealing with. And once everybody has the game plan ready and they stick to it, then they evaluate how well or how poorly they did. And that way people evaluate the most effective strategies to adopt and they really discard the ones that didn't work. So we need to cultivate healthy, positive environments, even though there's stress and pressure. If you're a manager, people that work for you will find it easier to meet their productivity numbers. If you're in personal situations, you'll find that your friends and the people you're interacting with will come to you more often for a reliable, managed answer to their problems. You see, what we're trying to accomplish here is a practical solution to an age-old problem. The age-old problem is how do we do so many multiple things or so many hard things or so many important things really well? Well, we have to just realize that these things are in the zone of what you can control and some things are out of your control. You should only feel pressure and be under pressure when there's something that you can control. When you take a step back and realize that it's not in your control, why even bother worrying? And always remember to follow your core values. You're, you know what? In my business career, personal career too, my word meant more than any signature I could put on a paper. My handshake was the foundation of everything I do. And my reputation still is of that. And you have to trust that you're doing what you're doing well, well. You know, being competent and having the knowledge about making right decisions means that you're, when you're questioned under pressure, you still stay the course. So focus on your mental and your physical health and learn to distance yourself from the panic because the panic sets in on a lot of cases like this. And when the panic sets in, it's important to cultivate and express your ability to distance yourself from it. That's right. You see, the important technique that you have to have here isn't yelling or screaming. It's deep breathing. I kid you not. In the thick of things, simple breathing exercises do the best to get your response to a measured response. Taking a few seconds to inhale and exhale the proper way slows down the heart rate, slows down the frenzy, and allows you to present information in a much more effective and simple way. And you must remember always to ask yourself what the next right move is. Don't just be working on what you're doing now. Always be looking at the next thing. That's right. Instead of just trying to see the big picture in the moment, Focus on what you need to do right after. Break it down into the next immediate thing because that way it's more manageable. You can't avoid feeling pressured, but you can change how you feel about it. You can change your perspective. And ultimately, the way we defeat this, the way we defeat working or being under pressure and still doing well, is remembering that the pressure is only temporary. That is the most important thing to remember about this. It's going to be temporary, no matter whether you're trying to win a project, whether you're dealing with a lawyer, or whether you're dealing with a personal relationship. While feeling pressure is uncomfortable, you don't want to add to it, okay? The pressure is going to disappear. Just try to stay in the moment and do the very best you can. So working under pressure has a finality to it. You're going to continue working, but the pressure is going to go away and be diminished. It's situational. Once you accomplish your task, by golly, the pressure's gone. And you know what they say? Some people work better under pressure. Now, there are different types of pressure you can certainly be under. 
You can have, God forbid, wartime pressure where your decisions are life and death. You can have medical decisions to make pressure, life or death. Or you simply can have the pressure of deciding what you're going to have for dinner tonight. What am I going to put in my dab rig today? But you know what? We can control it by simplifying and understanding the message. And it doesn't become pressure anymore. It just becomes another decision and another situation. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on living and working under pressure. This is The Real Senior Stoner. With the Core 2.0, I'm liking this 3D chamber an awful lot with its metal carb cap. Cotton ball production. Pressure can be a great thing, can be a bad thing. We have to manage it instead of it managing us. Thanks for joining, everybody. Don't forget to tell your friends, subscribe. Tell your family. Join the Senior Stoner family. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day. Cheers, everybody.